Hey guys, this is JM, and this video is all about five quick tips that you can start using right now to improve your landscape photography. Tip number one, planning. This tip probably seems like the most obvious one, but I'm putting it first because it's also the most important. The time of day and time of year you plan your shoot are probably two of the most critical details. One, because you definitely wanna be prepared for all types of weather. If it's going to be really hot, you wanna wear something comfortable. If it's gonna be extremely cold, you wanna make sure you're wearing something comfortable. You definitely don't wanna find yourself in any life-threatening situations. But most importantly, the time of year and the time of day are gonna completely change the look of the landscape. In fact, this can become a huge creative opportunity because the way something might look in the summertime is going to be completely different in the wintertime. In fact, I did a landscape photography trip out to Monument Valley, which for anyone that's been to Monument Valley or has seen Monument Valley, it looks like this most of the year. Lots of red rocks, really hot, just an absolute desert. Uh, it's really just the epitome of the American Southwest. And that red rock and that desert climate is just, it's absolutely beautiful. But it's also, I think in a lot of ways, the way that people are used to seeing Monument Valley and used to seeing the American Southwest. So as an example, I decided to go ahead and photograph Monument Valley and photograph the American Southwest in the wintertime. I was curious what that would look like, how it could be different, and maybe how that could bring something new in terms of showing a side of Monument Valley that people don't normally see. And when I was there, I got really lucky and it actually was hit with these whiteout conditions and became this crazy winter wonderland, which while absolutely freezing was beautiful. And I got some amazing photos during that time. And that was something that was absolutely predicated on the fact that I planned to go there during the winter instead of during the summer. The other part of planning and timing is dawn and golden hour are the absolute most beautiful times of day to photograph. The quality of the lighting during those times of day is much softer, way more colorful, and it's just going to give you much more interesting results than what you get if you're shooting a landscape in the middle of the day. It's for that reason that I recommend that when you're planning a shootout, you probably have a list of locations in your mind. Maybe there's like that really just awesome spot that you wanna hit during your trip. Maybe there's two, maybe there's three. Make sure that you budget time into your trip to be at those special locations during the best times of day. If you have an amazing opportunity, a beautiful vista in Yosemite Valley or something special like that, seeing that during sunset or um, during dawn is going to look way nicer than if you were hiking through there in the middle of the day with direct sunlight. Or even if you had overcast light, it's just not going to look as nice as that soft late afternoon light or early morning light. So tip number two is bring a wide angle lens. If you look up the definition of landscape, it's all about how landforms are fitting into either a natural or man-made environment. So you're looking at a lot of landforms, which is just a huge, huge canvas. And to fit all those things in the frame, you're gonna need a wide angle lens. Now, that's not to say to leave your long lenses at home. I think some of the most beautiful photographs are taken with long lenses. But when you're doing landscape photography, I believe that those lenses are absolutely secondary. So bring them, you're gonna use them, you're gonna probably get some really great photos with them. But let that be secondary. Don't forget your wide angle lenses. Tip number three is bring a tripod. This is probably the single most overlooked component of landscape photography. Tell me if this sounds familiar. You've got your camera, you've got your lenses, you've got your ND filters, you've got your new camera bag. It's all loaded up. You've got everything you need. Wrong. You forgot your tripod. Look, I absolutely have the most polarizing relationship with my tripod. It's probably the most inconvenient piece of gear because even if you have like a, a lightweight travel, carbon fiber, whatever kind of tripod, even if you can strap it to your backpack, it's just that extra piece of weight that you just don't wanna have, especially when you're hiking around all day. And, and for the most part, you're not going to be on the tripod because you know, during the middle of the day, it's just not really necessary. But when you reach those critical times of day that we were talking about, when it's early morning or when it's late afternoon and the sun's getting low, you're going to want to put your camera on the tripod because when you start shooting in that lower light, you're not gonna be able to do it handheld. You're gonna end up with blurry photos 
photos. And the last thing you wanna do is come back from this epic trip where you saw some of the most beautiful things you'll probably ever see in your life. And the only thing you took from it were a bunch of blurry photos. If you forget to bring your tripod, and believe me, I've either forgotten my tripod or intentionally left it at home more times than I care to admit you're going to end up struggling to either put your camera on a rock or some other kind of surface, or you're gonna do that like super awkward thing where you put the, the neck strap on and you, you'll hold the camera really tight to try to keep it still. I promise you when you do that, you're gonna have a bad time and your photos aren't gonna look great and, and everyone's gonna suffer for that. Tip number four is to make sure that you have tack sharp focus and to just eliminate any form of camera shake that you can. So the tripod is 100% your first line of defense. But once you've got your camera on that tripod, you also have little things like when you are like touching your camera and you're, you're hitting the shutter and you're causing those small vibrations in the camera body or in the tripod. So what you can do is bring a remote shutter, hook that up to your camera and snap photos with the remote shutter. So you're hands free and you can snap your photos that way. Or if you don't have a remote shutter, most cameras do have some kind of a timing feature on them. So set up that timer, you click the shutter and whether it's two seconds, 10 seconds, whatever it is, that gives you time to back off of your camera, let the shutter go, and you lose all that vibration and you get a much sharper focus. The other thing that you can do, you know, once you've got your tripod, once you're using a remote shutter, is just looking at your focal range. Most people think that just focusing to infinity is going to give them the sharpest focus throughout their entire frame. But actually, if you focus on something a third of the way into the frame, that is going to give you the most consistent sharpness throughout the entire photograph. So use your the magnifying glass on your display, uh, you know, that digital display, zoom in to something that's a third of the way into the photo, and just make sure that that thing, whatever it is, as crisp as it can be. And if that object is crisp, then everything else in the photo is gonna be nice and sharp. Another part of, of making sure that you get that tack sharp focus is finding the sweet spot for your aperture. So I know that um, I shoot on Canon lenses. Uh, I know that a lot of Canon lenses, the sweet spot is somewhere between f8 and f11 uh, and it's just it's the that mid-range where your lens is at its absolute sharpest um so definitely go ahead and do a google search and just see you know what the lens set that you own or whatever lenses you're going to be shooting on what that sweet spot is for those lenses so that you'll get the sharpest results because when you're shooting landscape there's so much beautiful detail in the frame that you really want to pull the maximum potential from every single one of those pixels. You don't wanna get into the editing room after your trip and zoom in and, and realize that what you saw on that tiny LCD screen that you thought looked awesome is actually just a little bit blurry or maybe a lot blurry and doesn't look as nice as you thought. So tip number five is using long exposure. Long exposures when you're doing landscape photography are absolutely something that you want to be experimenting with. Whether you're trying to achieve some sort of special effect like really soft waterfalls or light trails, cars kind of moving through the landscape, or if you're just trying to get more light in the frame when you're shooting during those later times of day, you can really start to stretch out the time that you're shooting when you're using longer exposures. Whether you're using a couple of extra seconds or in some cases, maybe even if you're doing night photography, a couple of extra minutes, I've done it and I'll do it again. It is absolutely the most exciting result because you're, the camera is able to see light over time. And so the photo that you're getting is something that like you can't even really see with the human eye. And so you're able to to communicate something through a photograph that you wouldn't see otherwise. And that's really awesome. The important thing to remember when you're doing long exposures is that again, coming back, you're gonna need to have your camera on the tripod, right? Because you don't wanna be shaking your camera around. You don't wanna end up with uh, blurry photos. But once you've got your camera on that tripod and you're doing those long exposures, you can just dial that ISO all the way down because with that long exposure, you're gonna get all the light sensitivity, you know, you're gonna get all the light that you need into that sensor, keep your aperture at that mid-range and you're gonna get some really, really good results. So that's it. Those are my five tips for landscape photography. If you learned something new or if you feel like I completely butchered this and left out all the most important information, let me know by leaving a comment below. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.